thank you very much. I would like to thank Mr. Baginetas, Yanis, my dear friend Yanis, for giving me the opportunity to say a few things and to give me some more time because I want to say very important things uh, regarding the industry. Okay. I will talk about crops under shelter and in the end I will say a few things about how the industry understands uh, crops under shelter. And thank you Mrs. Stavrakaki and Mr. Kikilis who have given one that data for the last part of my presentation. First of all, I want to, to point out that farming has always been important. Daniel Webster in 1840 uh, said uh, the following. So reference is made to the uh, to the local dialect, so he, the, the speaker is making a joke about the local dialect, which is untranslatable. No. So, Daniel Webster said, when tillage begins, other arts follow, and farmers therefore are the founders of human civilization. The same thing had uh, been sold, said by uh, Xenophon, uh, the ancient Greek historian. We get back to farming when we need it, because farming, all has always been uh, a very important sector for the humankind. However, it has very specific problems. It is always under pressure. We have competition from the Balkans, financial crisis. Um, there's a reduction in prices. We have a huge, we rely hugely on uh, subsidies. And young people do not want to work in the primary sector. This is just saying because even Old movies have been presenting uh, farmers uh, on a bad way, so to say, that this is not a very good profession. There are global challenges for farming, of course. First of all, during the, la the next 35 years, the population will be increased to 30%, while the increase for food, the demand for food, will be increased to 70%. Soil will be degraded, and due to 2050, we will have half of the uh, land available for farming, and we will have huge problems with water resources and energy. Since to, until 2030, we will be covering on 70% uh, of our energy needs with imports in Greece. I may seem young and handsome, and of course, above all, I am very. Uh, very modest, but I cannot, uh, my eyesight is not what it used to be. However, we should take uh, a lot of measures since the climate change affects farming. A lot of speakers have said that, that we will have huge problems due to climate change. So, due to the climate change and the reduction of the water resources and the increase in the demand of the consumers, we will have more and more uh, crops under shelter because crops under shelter gives us the possibility to produce products during the whole year since we can use all kinds of uh, uh, pesticides and fertilizers. Uh, FAO, according to FAO, in the greenhouses there is three to five times more effective use of water uh, a better water use efficiency uh, compared to the uh, open field. You can see that we have the greenhouses and the net houses, respectively. Now, what is happening in Greece? We have, uh, and I'm sure that my colleague Savas will also mention that we have 600,000 stremas with vegetables. We have only 60,000 uh, stremas with uh, um, greenhouses. In Thessaly, out of the 60,000, we have only very few, less than 2,000 stremas. And most of them are here in Trikala. Trikala and Servota, for example, this village is famous for its greenhouses. Now, what is happening to other countries? Spain has 
700,000 streamers and we have only 60,000. And you can see the other figures. And Turkey has been doing uh, really well uh, because when I started my career we had more than Turkey, more uh, streamers in greenhouses. Now Turkey has 800,000 streamers. In... You can see here pictures from Spain, from Turkey. We also have in Crete and we also have very contemporary greenhouses, very modern cutting edge in drama. We also have some specificities as a country. For example, as the Secretary General said, since we have uh, the 3% of the land that we cultivate is covered by vegetables, they give us a lot of money. They, and we are champions. The World Food Organization said that all countries should have 80 um, kilos uh, per capita per year, we eat much more vegetables and we eat uh, much more tomato compared to other countries. And in the summer we consume a lot of tomato because uh, the, Greek, the Greek salad is mainly composed by tomato, therefore everyone comes to Greece and asks for Greek salads with tomatoes. And even producers in the summer, they cannot uh, grow tomatoes due to the climate conditions in Greece and in from December until March they cannot also grow tomatoes and we import tomatoes from Albania during the winter in Greece and from Bulgaria and from North Macedonia uh, we could grow those vegetables ourselves so we should reform the vegetable farming and a very important tool towards this direction are crops under shelter. However, how uh, should we uh, do it? We should uh, in adopt some sustainable technologies. The right um, position, for example, let's talk about Volos, the climate of Volos. And we, ha we will have three zones. On the left, we will have the, the we need some heating and for a large uh, period we need cooling. But what is happening to Almeria and Amsterdam with a lot of greenhouses? We will see that greenhouses in Amsterdam have no, they need only uh, heating and in Almeria they need only cooling. But in Greece, in order to have a good greenhouse, you need both heating and cooling. So we need smarter greenhouses and this is uh, why we need to be more careful and to plan better. So, we should plan everything correctly, uh, heating, cooling, and there are software available at the universities and anyone can use them for free, both in the University of Thessaly and the University of Athens. We have um, various systems for cooling and shading also uh, should be taken into consideration. Saving energy, thermal curtains, biomass, Passive solar systems, everything is available and measured. This is not just theory, there are thermal sheets and of course closed greenhouses which started from uh, the Netherlands. It is a greenhouse on two reservoirs and you can use the cold water and the heat water uh, respectively uh, when you need them. And we have built um, such a greenhouse you can see the pictures and we have combined it with the uh, geotherm, geothermal energy. In order to be able to have both heating and cooling. And I don't want to bore you with a lot of technical details. Therefore, we had 40% saving on water and 70% savings on energy and 25% the improvement of quality because we used uh, pesticides and fertilizers. We should also protect them from various poisons. We use curtains, nettings, nets. Uh, we use specific sheet in order to uh, throw and to uh, and meshes in order to uh, 
uh, not allow insects to come inside. We also have anti-fogs and anti-dripping uh, methods. And we also have managed to save water and fertilizers. With hydroponic farming, we have as a goal to increase the production and increase also the efficiency of the water, which is also very important. And last but not least, the climate in the greenhouse. This technology is very easy and very accessible. So this will uh, give us the opportunity to improve uh, the production and have much more products. And last but not least, a few words about netting and net houses. During the summer we cannot uh, produce uh, good products because we have attacks from insects uh, and uh, the quality of the products is also not good because they are burnt by the sun. You can see here net houses in Spain and at the right side of the picture in Velestinos. At the right side, net houses in Velestino. And here, when it comes to the climate, we have managed to have 100% uh, and we have decreased the water consumption to 20%. And this is an eye financial model that we uh, use. You can see here 20% uh, equity at a greenhouse, 40% loans and 40% subsidies. We start from the cheaper uh, greenhouse and we can also spend a lot of money, 150,000 euros per strema. However, we have to see the uh, efficiency. I don't want to bore you with the figures, you can see them from yourselves. A net house, for example, gives us 1.7 uh, per strema. And if we were to improve it even more, we will reach 2.5 million uh, thousands, I apologize, per strema. So, let's see uh, the pure point of the industry. We don't have enough uh, greenhouses in Greece. The fact is that we have small agricultural holdings, we don't have incentives, we don't have organization, and we don't have efficiency. And also the fact that farmers do not want to collaborate with each other. We have to convince farmers to collaborate, because uh, if you have only one strema, you cannot be efficient. You need at least five stremas. And so, um, the industry helps us a lot. We have excellent plants in Greece for producing thermal keratins and thermal sheet, and they mainly, we mainly export them. 80% is exported and only 20% of those materials is used here in Greece. And you can see now, when it comes to research and education in our countries, in our schools we don't educate crop managers. And the collaboration between farmers and university is very important. The University of Thessaly and the Agriculture University, we have a lot of programs towards a good direction. And last but not least, to those who doubt, we have in Thessaly excellent greenhouses. The Kalyadzi farm in Pirietos village, they produce gardenia in Agria, in Volos, 80 stremas, and in Kardica, 50 stremas, a hydroponic uh, greenhouse. 
So we want clean and qualitative products. We need to save energy and water to protect the environment. Those technologies already exist, but we need to train users and, of course, political will. I'm not so sure about the political will. I have been waiting for that since I was a kid. But, Mr. Lianos, since you ask which are the prerequisites and which are the conditions, we need, first of all, to train farmers and, in the end, to have the uh, willingness to collaborate. Ladies and gentlemen, this country, either we want it or not, farmers will be the backbone of the Greek society. And we should not forget that the well-being of the farmers uh, will be an index of the well-being of the Greek citizens. And therefore, we should respect Greek farmers. And my aunt, my late uncle, I apologize, used to say to me, sometimes here in Greece we nag about the farmers' strikes. My uncle used to say to me, that the tractors are the backbone of our economy and they are the leverage that we